What's up guys? Today we're going to take this Asus Strix G15 that I picked up on a Black Friday sale. I'm going to do a few upgrades and modification to this machine that will give it a nice boost. Okay guys, I'm Sol and let's do tech. This is the Asus ROG Strix G15. This laptop had been on the market for some time and many reviewers had already pointed out how well this machine performs. This video is not a review, but instead I will show you how to take this machine and work out all the issues that have been pointed out by customers and reviewers. We're going to look at the disk space, the Wi-Fi card, and memory. So before we start working on this laptop, let's talk about the value with this machine. Specs and price are driving factors in laptop purchasing decisions, and for most of us, price and value are a big factor. Like I mentioned, this machine has been out for some time and therefore would have some nice discounts attached to it. If you're able to pick this thing up on a discount, you can then invest that savings back into some upgrades. I purchased this laptop on a Black Friday sale and saved about $600 off the regular price. So with that savings, I invested about $425 in the upgrade you see here. The one thing that is nice about this laptop is the ability to customize it. Now, I'm not talking about the neat interchangeable plastic parts on the lid or the cool RGB effects. I'm talking about the actual internals of this machine. The upgrades I'm going to perform are not unique to this laptop and can be performed on other laptop brands and models. To be clear, this laptop is not fully modular like the framework, but it would allow for SSD expansion, memory upgrade, and Wi-Fi card swap. So before buying any laptop, you should always check if these components can be upgraded, since having the ability to upgrade components could extend the ownership life of your machine. Some vendors like to solder on some of these components directly to the motherboard, making these upgrades impossible. Yes, Apple, I'm looking at you. When I was doing my research about this laptop, I found that this machine is fast and quiet and just an overall excellent performing gaming laptop. There were a few issues mainly with disk capacity being only 512 gigabytes, unreliable Wi-Fi, and possible issue with the RAM, although I've been hearing that this is something with the early release and now is fixed. Well, these are the kind of issues that will prevent me from purchasing this laptop at full price. Looking at user comments on various forms, I found some contradicting info between what users who have upgraded the machine have claimed and what Asus says this machine would support. For example, Asus claims that this machine would support SSD up to one terabyte and RAM upgrade up to 32 gigabytes, but users have claimed successfully installing two terabyte drives and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So we're going to test these limits in this video. Okay, let's get to the work. First thing we need to do is open the laptop. Uh, this laptop is secured by a few screws around the case on the bottom, so we just need to loosen those up and then uh, we'll get the case open. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead here because you guys don't need to sit there and watch me unscrew all these screws. But one thing I wanna mention is that uh, this machine does have two types of screws and two different lengths. So I would recommend to make sure to get some kind of tray where you can organize your screws so you don't uh, forget wh which type of screws goes where. Once all the screws have been removed, uh, you can use a guitar pick to get in between the plastic to pry open the, the case. So I'm going to use the guitar pick over here and pry this open. Once the case has been pried open, you should be able to lift up the bottom case and pull it up to expose the internal components. As you're doing that, be very careful not to pull too roughly because there are a couple of ribbon cables that are connected from the motherboard to the bottom of the case, which are being used for the RGB light bar. Here we can see the SSD slot for the expansion, um, as well as our RAM for the upgrade. And right underneath our primary SSD, we have our Wi-Fi card. We can tell by looking at the antennas. So um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the primary SSD so we can gain access to the Wi-Fi card. So this SSD is held by one screw, which I'm going to remove right now. And now with the screw remove, I can easily pull this SSD out of the slot. 
and let me put it away and as you can see we have the Wi-Fi card right over here so we can see the antennas we got the white cable and the black cable and the thing that's nice is that they are marked on the Wi-Fi card there's little arrows that kind of tell you which um, antenna cord goes where there's a black and white arrow so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the Wi-Fi card right now which is very similar to the process of removing an SSD I'm just gonna grab a flathead screwdriver here and just uh, get those antennas off just like that get underneath them and pop them out and uh, switch over to a Phillips head and get the Wi-Fi card out So I'm going to grab my new Wi-Fi card and just kind of put them next to each other so I can confirm that the key is indeed the same. As you can see, the key is the same, so I should be able to slide it into the slot without any issue. And uh, once I was able to get the card all the way in, I secured it with a screw and then I tried to get the antennas connected, which I found to be a very tedious process while the card was in the slot, so I decided to remove the card and connect the antennas with the card being outside of the slot first. So with the card outside of the slot, uh, putting in the antennas was a little bit easier. I was actually able to have more maneuverability and get those antennas attached. And then once the, I got the antennas attached, I was able to slide the card in to the slot and secure it with the screw. With the Wi-Fi card installed, uh, it was time to put the original SSD back in. And the reason I'm doing that is I would like to boot the system up right now and just confirm that the Wi-Fi is working. Uh, when you're doing multiple components install it's probably a good idea to do one component at a time double check your work make sure everything is okay that you, nothing has gone uh, wrong with the system and I can do that by basically booting up and making sure that the device is recognized by Windows which I'm going to do next So back into Windows, uh, we can see that indeed the Wi-Fi card was recognized and it looks good in Device Manager as well as the Bluetooth device. So everything looks good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, add another SSD in the expansion slot. And I'm going to use the expansion slot right now um, to add this 2 terabyte SSD. And remember, um, Asus did say that uh, the maximum the system can handle is 1 terabyte and other users have claimed that a 2 terabyte drive can also be used. So I'm going to put this 2 terabyte drive into the expansion slot and hopefully the system will recognize it. So uh, this 2 terabyte drive is going to be held by one screw just like the original um, primary drive. So I remove the screw and uh, I'll make sure that I know where the key is which is right down there. It's a little little notch there and then I'll push the drive all the way in and secure it with the screw. So now with the drive installed I'm going to close the case and again boot into Windows and confirm that indeed this 2 terabyte drive is recognized by the system. So as you can see, uh, back into Windows, 2 terabytes was recognized, no problem at all, and Windows does see it. So at this point, most users will be uh, all set. So we've addressed the Wi-Fi issue by installing a better Wi-Fi card, and we addressed the space issue by using the expansion slot 
and adding a 2 terabyte SSD. The next upgrade I wanted to do was the RAM. I wanted to get a little bit better latency as well as uh, change it from a single rank to dual rank memory. I'm also going to upgrade from the 16 gigabyte all the way up to 64 gigabytes. Remember Asus said that only 32 gigabytes is supported. Some users have claimed 64 gigabytes is working as well, so I want to verify that and I'll be upgrading here all the way up to 64 gigabytes. So I'm going to start with uh, removing the cover again and I'm going to be upgrading the RAM. So first step is to peel off this protective thermal cover. And now I'll get my RAM sticks uh, ready. So I'll set them over here. And next I'm going to start removing the original RAM. So to remove the RAM, there's these two clips on the side. You just uh, push them out and the RAM will kick up and then you're able to remove it just like that. And now I'm going to put the new RAM stick that I bought. So this is 32 gigabytes. I'm going to pop this in and just put it into the slot and then push it down so the clips will hold it down. And now I'm going to repeat the process for the second slot. So same thing, just pop the original RAM out and set it aside and go ahead and pop the new stick in. So it is important to pay attention to the little notch. That is the key. It kind of tells you in which orientation the memory stick should go in. So as you can see, I had to flip mine over and now I can be able to slide it in and just push it down to pop it in. Now that the memory is installed, I'm going to reapply the protective thermal cover. And I'm going to hold on to these original memory sticks. Um, you never know, so <laughs> might as well hold on to them. And now I'm going to close the case and uh, boot up into Windows and hopefully everything should work. On the first boot after the memory install, um, I did get stopped at this prompt. Uh, the system froze up on me. Um, I had to force shut it down by holding the power button. And then the second time I turned it back on and went back into Windows with no issue. And now back in Windows, as you can see, the system did recognize the 64 gigabytes of RAM. I have a little bit slightly improved latency, um, as well as the system is now in dual rank mode as opposed to single rank. So the upgrade was a success. So this next part is a bit of a bonus. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is removing the original primary SSD with the Windows installation on it. And I'm going to put uh, a brand new one terabyte SSD in its place, uh, which I am going to install Linux on. So if you guys want to see that installation process, let me know in the comments and I'll post a video on that as well. So this SSD, as we've seen before, is held up by just one screw, which I'm removing right now. And then at that point, I'll be able to slide the SSD out just like this and set it aside. And now I'm going to put the one terabyte in just watch out for the little notch there and slide it in all the way. Here we go. And then secure it with the screw. At this point, the upgrade is complete. I am going to hold on to this primary SSD with the Windows installation on it. If you found this video interesting, uh, please subscribe. I will have more videos coming up at a later time.